What's the likeness between a refrigerator and a game? In this episode we're talking about feedback loops. Hi, I'm John. Welcome to this channel where we are serious about play and games. And in this series we will be looking into game design knowledge. Many of these examples will be about board games. But the knowledge is usable no matter what kind of games you're doing. If it's board games, computer games, LARPs, role playing games or something else. Let's talk about feedback loops. A feedback loop is when the system, because of your performance, gives you something that changes how that system works. And there are two types of feedback loops. Positive feedback loops and negative feedback loops. A positive feedback loop is when you perform well in the game. And that makes the game even easier. So for example, in a shooter you might get a gun because you performed well. And that gun makes the game even easier. Or in Monopoly, as you buy more and more streets, it becomes more and more likely that your co-players will end up on your streets and therefore will have to pay rent to you. The other way around, when the game becomes harder because you are doing well. That's a negative feedback loop. And one of the most classical examples of this is Mario Kart where there are special weapons that only attack the player in the lead. Feedback loop is a game design tool borrowed from cybernetics. And one of the most classical examples would be a refrigerator. As a refrigerator gets warmer, it switches on the cooling unit and it becomes colder again. If it becomes too cold, the cooling unit switches off. And this way it keeps the temperature at the same level. And to do this with a game, you need to treat the game as a system and look at it as a system. And one of the most classical examples of this is SimCity, which is completely built around in feedback loops interacting with each other, both positive and negative. And your job as a player is to balance these feedback loops against, against each other so that you get a city that works. So, positive feedback loops enlarges the difference between players, and this way it drives the game towards an end state. One of the problems with this is of course that it can lead to runaway leaders and predictable winners. Negative feedback loops squeezes the players together and play, making them play closer to each other. And this makes the competition fiercer. But the problem is of course that if you squeeze them too much together, it might feel unpredictable and it doesn't really matter who wins because the last player and the first player are still going to end up in almost the same place. And finally, you don't have to implement all feedback loops through mathematical systems. It could also be a social interaction such as in uh, Settlers of Catan, where we have a trading situation where all players trade with each other. And of course, this makes it more and more expensive for the player in the lead to buy something because the other players don't want to share the resources with that person that is already in the lead. So that's it for now. I hope this gave you some new knowledge and some new thoughts and ideas of what you could do. If you liked this, you can check out more of the series over here or you can check another random video over here. And do feel free to subscribe if you really like it. With that, go create and I see you around.